In first year business classes, students start to learn about the evaluation mechanisms we use. I refer to them as business tools. And I find that while they learn them, many students are still unsure exactly how and when to use them. I gave this quick review in my class, and more than one student thanked me for clearing things up. So, I present it to you. The business tools that students learn include the SWOT analysis, the PEST analysis, Porter's Five Forces, and, if they're lucky, someone will show them the TOES matrix. They can be used separately, but they are meant to work together to help us analyze a company or an organization. First, the big picture. Let's look at the general environment. This is the largest arena you might be playing in. Of course, the largest arena would be the world. It's not likely that students will be working in this large an arena right away. Maybe never. So let's look at a smaller but still large arena. Say the company you are analyzing is in North America. The first business tool will be applied to this general environment, and that'll be the pest. You'll examine the political and legal environment for your company. Are there any legal concerns over the product you create? Is it likely that new legislation is coming along that will affect your company? Next, consider the economic climate. How are things going in your country? How are things going in other countries, especially those that have a strong influence on yours? Is the economy growing or is it slowing? Then look at the social and cultural factors. These include a wide range of things. Demographics, social consensus, attitudes, changes in cultural mix, and many other considerations. Is your product going to be old-fashioned? Is it likely to gain in popularity, or is it starting to wane? If you are a restaurant that sells greasy hamburgers, is the growing concern over the food we eat going to affect you? Finally, remember the technological factors. While some industries are built on technology, almost every industry will be affected by it. Even if you are a bakery, while the chemistry of baking buns and breads will not change, the technology of the ovens or the mixing process could. How will technology affect your cash register, your ordering systems, your inventory control, your customer's connection to you? Now that you've considered the big picture with the pest analysis, let's move in a bit and see the smaller picture, the specific environment. This is your arena. This is where you will operate. How big this arena is depends on the industry. Let's say you're evaluating a business that operates in British Columbia. There are many distinct regions in BC, but your company is in the Okanagan. So let's evaluate that region. For that, we will use the five forces model. This is the tool for a specific environment. When you examine your company's industry within the Okanagan, how fierce is the competition? Is there room for you to move in without having to steal market share from others? Or will you be one of many fighting for the same customers? And speaking of customers, how powerful are they? How much pressure can customers put on you to control the prices you charge? Some industries are very sensitive to customers' demands, while others are not. The same goes for suppliers. If your suppliers are specialized or few in number, then they can likely charge what they want and you'll have to pay it. If there are many suppliers or the supplies you need are commonplace, then the suppliers will have to be competitive in their pricing. Next, you can consider how easy it is for a new company to drop into your market. If a new entrant can start up easily, then you'll find yourself in a weaker position when maintaining your share of the market. If the chance of new entrants is low, then you can expect it to be much easier to maintain your current market share. And finally, what are the chances of a substitute product? Many students have trouble understanding this, and for good reason. Most substitute products are unforeseeable. Take glass, for example. Years ago, we used glass for shipping almost any liquid. Then, out of nowhere comes plastic. Cheaper, lighter, and pretty much unbreakable. Plastic was the substitute product for glass. Now time for the last picture, your environment. Let's move in even closer and assume your company operates in the central Okanagan. Now it's time to think about what your company has to offer, and for that, we use a SWOT. What strengths do you have inside your company? What weaknesses do you have? When you look around the Okanagan, what opportunities are there for you? And are there threats that you need to consider? Finally, if you've been taught about it, apply the TOES matrix to your SWOT. This will help in creating strategies for your company based on strength opportunities, called SO strategies. You'll also generate strength threat strategies, weakness opportunity strategies, and weakness threat strategies. These will all be specific to your company's situation. So by using each of these tools at the proper time, you can consider each arena separately. This allows you to identify the important factors from the general environment all the way down to your own company. 
and by evaluating yourself appropriately, you can create strategies to move your company forward. I hope this was helpful in allowing you to see how the various business tools are used and when they can be of most value to you.